last time. More girls. Back in session. Please be seated. Okay, Madison Beatty. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Okay, we're here on Defendant's motion to reduce bond. That's correct, Your Honor. May it please the court, Brad Stewart, on behalf of Madison Beatty, Judge. And for the record, this is in case numbers uh, 2022 CF 1920 and 1921. Uh, Your Honor, we are present before the court with regards to our request to reduce the bond. As previously stated, uh, from a posture standpoint, these are cases that were moved up from the juvenile court into adult court uh, based on the uh, nature of the cases. Um, Judge, as it applies first to uh, 22 CF 1920, um, Ms. Beatty is charged with uh, aggravated assault with a firearm. And within the four corners of the allegations of probable cause affidavit, uh, did the court have an opportunity to review those? I did. Very good. Judge, the, the allegations stem from uh, evidence of a third party that three females pulled a gun saying they would kill the alleged victim which was the son of the individual that provided this information. It outlines the three females. Number one, with Taya pink gun wearing a crop top t-shirt and gray sweatpants. Number two, my client, Miss Madison Beatty, uh, allegedly carrying a black gun. Number three, uh, the third party, uh, Kiki, uh, allegedly carrying a black gun. The probable cause uses allegations of the attempted murder charge which we'll address in a moment, in 1921, saying that my client was firing a weapon during that event. I want to point out that that's incorrect, contradicted by the probable cause affidavit of 1921, but the question really uses potentially inadmissible evidence that was viewed on a Snapchat video that states is no longer available, showing a black female in a crop top shirt with a pink handled pistol. He then identifies that individual as a defendant. I never thought I'd do this in open court, Judge, but I would like the court to take judicial notice that my client is not an uh, African-American female. I think that the previously stated allegations that she had a black gun does not fit in, uh, of course, with that probable cause affidavit. Uh, these are serious allegations, Judge, and the probable cause does not properly identify my client as the individual uh, that this law enforcement officer is writing about. Moving forward, Judge, in 1921, uh, the attempted second-degree murder with firearms, she's charged under... Oh, are, are you arguing that, that, that this probable cause... Are you trying to defeat this probable cause at this point? No, Your Honor, this is not an adversarial probable cause hearing. Uh, based on uh, 3130, uh, uh, the, the probable cause, adversarial probable cause is moot based on the posture of the case. Um, the uh, warranted arrest and the state direct filing uh, circumvents the adversarial probable cause. We're arguing weight of the evidence for purposes of bond. Um, 
which is a proper consideration under 3131, uh, considerations for the court under bond. Essentially, Judge, on this you case... Know, if you're citing to something in a statute, you need to give it to me. Judge, it's Florida Rule of Criminal Procedure 3.131. Okay. So I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to I'm gonna understand exactly what you're, what you're arguing. Simply factors for bond that, the court, that the court may consider. What, what's, the, what's the rule? 3? Three? 3.131. factors for the court to consider under that rule is the weight of the evidence where can you show it to me I mean, I, I don't d dispute what you're saying. I want to see the language so I can Does it believe apply it's sub it. I believe it's subsection B. D it as in dog? B as in boy, if I'm not mistaken. It goes over ties to the community, criminal history, facts of the case, facts and circumstances of the case. Okay, hold on a second. I found it. You were correct. I just want to, I want to see the way it's worded. Absolutely. Sometimes apply. Go ahead. Absolutely, Your Honor. Judge, the, the, the thrust of that argument ultimately is that there's not a proper identification of my client in the probable cause affidavit. Um, the weight of the evidence in that regard is weak in conjunction with additional factors I'll, I will go over. Judge, Judge do dovetailing into 1921, she is charged under 782.04, that's the felony murder statute. Um, again, we run into some serious problems with regards to the element of proof. Um, the state, or the basic facts, I guess, alleged by the state at this point was that my client was a driver. There were two passengers in addition to her, three total. She stopped at a stop sign, a passenger allegedly exits the car and shoots at the alleged victim. There's evidence of a bullet round entry point in the rear trunk of the vehicle. The rear passenger is injured with an injury consistent with a gunshot wound. <clears throat> All vehicle passengers say they were shot at. The main thrust here, the main point is the only nexus linking my client to this allegation is driving a vehicle and lawfully stopping at a stop sign, lawful obedience to a traffic law. There's no evidence of collusion, conspiracy, enabling. The point is, these are serious allegations carrying the highest criminal liability in our justice systems, charging a minor child with murder. Nothing links her to that shooting. A mere presence is insufficient as a matter of law. That goes to the weight of the evidence for the court to consider uh, reduction in bond. Again, Miss Beatty is a minor child, one of our most precious resources now more than ever. As previously stated from a systematic standpoint, it certainly is not in her best interest to be housed <clears throat> by herself alone in the Okaloosa County Jail. We're in a spot where we are essentially isolating her and she is being treated differently than other similarly situated uh, individuals charged. She is the only juvenile there. It locks down an entire pod, preventing the Oakley's County Jail from housing at a minimum 20 people. 
She also is not in school at this point, Judge, certainly uh, in her best interest. And again, she does have local ties. Parents own real property here. Uh, they've been here for generations. Uh, she certainly doesn't have the financial wherewithal to post the bond uh, that was set at first appearance, Judge. Her mother is here, present. Uh, and Judge, what I'm asking is the, the court allow a signature bond with her mother uh, to sign on with pretrial services and any other uh, pretrial conditions that the court deems reasonable and necessary. Rivers. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, let me first uh, start and address uh, the housing issue of Ms. Beatty. Uh, the jail has the capacity to house her. Uh, they don't get females a lot. They do get uh, juvenile males more so. They have the ability to put her in a jail with other female juveniles at another jail in another county. But Ms. Roper had indicated that when her previous attorney, Mark Welton, when she had spoken to him about it, he objected to that. He did not want to have to drive over to Escambia to, uh, to, for visitation with his client. So there are alternatives available. Ms. Roper also had indicated that normally they just send the female over to Walton County. However, in this particular incidence, uh, when she had contacted Walton County, they're in the process of remodeling the jail. So the area where they keep the juvenile females is temporarily not available. That's when the idea came up to go to a different county, and then that's when it was uh, uh, said no by the defense attorney. The issue of schooling, schooling is always important, and they all have programs there at the jail regarding schooling. This is not DJJ schooling, but this they do have the schooling, and they also have the GED program that is there. All she has to do is fill out a request to be a part of that. Now, going back to the original, the beginning arguments, so in the first case that counsel addressed, that would be the aggravated assault by threat with a deadly weapon. In this particular case, I would argue it is sufficient, the juvenile who was shot at stated all three females pulled their gun on him, threatening whoa, him. Whoa, 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 so that's page two of the uh, Crestview PD warrant affidavit. The warrant, which was signed by Judge Jim Ward. Right. And at the top of page two, Your Honor, page two of three, he stated all three females pulled guns on him, threatening him, and saying they would kill him. I do, uh, I do agree that there, there are some wording issues later on in that paragraph. But as regards to the victim identifying the, the assailants, he did. And there's even further indications in here uh, about LaPortia Baker attempting to separate the parties. There was issue of describing the guns, one pink, two black, who had which gun. Uh, Miss Beatty was identified as the driver in both of these incidents and for the court to also be aware both incidents happened within a short time period on the same day within the same hour they went from one place to the next and there is a and then moving over to the next case that would be the attempted second-degree murder with a firearm it's attempted not a murder, but attempted, and it is alleged that she is an accessory to the crime that they drove around, which is on video, circled more than once, 
stopped, her girlfriend jumps out of the vehicle and fires approximately, well, they found 10 shell casings right there where it was seen on video where she was. Uh, the indication from the police is that the uh, subsequent shooting where the backseat passenger was injured occurred at a different location. Uh, the police also had put, I believe, in the report that due to the angle of the bullet hole entry, that it was impossible watching the video as to where the boys had been standing to where it could have they could have possibly even have shot at them. There was also witnesses there. Uh, one, there's a video of uh, one gentleman who at first thought that they were shooting at him and ducked. And he did not say that it was, uh, oh, the, the boys were shooting. It was the girls in the vehicle. The girls were the ones that were firing the shots. And I agree with the Mr. Stewart, this is a very serious case, and therefore the court felt apparently that it was necessary to set a very high bond. The fact that she is a child should not make this better or worse. It is the fact that she is 17 years old and she is alleged to have committed a very serious crime, not one but two, within a short period of time with her girlfriend. You know, for me. Uh, as it relates to the housing issue, I was unaware of the Escambia County issue. I didn't. I didn't know that that was out there. I, I, I believe it was Escambia County that Lisa Roper had said, but it was uh, 86 by Mr. Welton. Okay. Um, it, either way, it still presents an access issue, Judge. Um, and I do agree that Walton County is typically the conflict county that we that we partner with, if you will. Um, Wal Walton County, it has been verified through Lieutenant Roper. Walton County is unavailable. Uh, in order for her to do school at the jail, she can't do it with adults, Judge. She's juvenile. She's the only juvenile there. Um, just for the, just, I mean, not, not to interrupt you, but they're mandated to provide schooling, and they will provide schooling. And they do. The way, the way they do it, there's, there's a lot of different ways to do it, but. They are required yes, sir. to do it in all the jails for Absolutely. the juveniles. And, and I understand, I, I do understand and respect that, Judge. Uh, it just it may not be optimal. Optimal. I'm not saying that. Right. But I'm. And but, that's kind of my point, Judge. It just well, goes into the logistics of it. But it's different than saying that she's not in school. Currently. That's what you said. Not currently, in school, she isn't. Not. Well, they are required to provide that access, yes. And, Your Honor, if the court is inclined to reduce the bond, we would ask that uh, she be uh, given an ankle monitor and pretrial services. But the state is asking that the bonds remain the same. Your Honor, if I may. Uh, my client has asked me to relate to the court that um, she is not a danger, not a threat, and she will not disappoint the court in any way upon release. Your Honor, the state does have concerns that if she is released, uh, she, she will. There's one girl, the shooter, who yeah. is outstanding, who has not been found <coughs> as of yet, and we believe that they are girlfriends, and we believe that they, they, shoot, they will flee together. That's one of the reasons for the ankle monitor. And certainly, Judge, we can remedy that if the court deems necessary with the GPS monitor. Would have no idea where she is, and Ms. Beatty does not have the means to do so, Judge. Okay, anything further? There you are. Okay. I'm going to take a short break, and then we'll uh, come back in the portal. All right.
Thank you. You about to go down <clears> here? <throat> Why don't you start writing this one? This is good. This is good. That's, that's coming from across the aisle. You got to talk to across the aisle. You want to keep the same message, and you can do that.
Board has uh, considered the motion to reduce the bond and all the probable cause perhaps could have been more artfully. Reduced uh, as it relates to the attempted felony murder. Um, what is clear in this probable cause that it places the defendant at the scene of a very serious crime. While there may be some disagreements, uh, I think it well establishes probable cause court is actually concerned that the third defendant co-defendant is not been apprehended and so I think that that uh, makes the risk to the public greater uh, Court's going to maintain that that bond at a hundred thousand um, dollars as to the other charge um, again same comments regarding the probable cause and and based upon that courts going to reduce that to fifty thousand dollar bond however the court's going to and i don't even know what the what the uh, conditions of the pretrial conditions are of the bond now but the courts if if bond is posted the court is uh ordering an ankle monitor and ordering the juvenile to be held essentially on house arrest. I would they call it in the juvenile arena, but it's their uh, standard procedure uh, at the certain level when they are allowed to be out. And I would uh, put those conditions on the on the defendant. And no contact with any of... No contact with the co-defendant, nor, of course, the alleged victims but certainly not the co-defendants any contact would be would be very uh, serious. and as it relates to the issues that were raised regarding school um, if if the juvenile remains in this facility and if she's not getting schooling and she so chooses, she wants schooling, I, I would be more than open to having somebody inform the court of that. And the court will make inquiry because that is absolutely not appropriate. And again, you, you know, you're, you're betwixt and between whether you want to, if she remains here in this jail, whether you want her, and I, I'm actually sympathetic to the fact that she's basically in solitary confinement. I'm very, I'm very sympathetic to that, and, and I'm glad to hear that there had been discussions of her being able to be allowed to be around other, other, um, other juvenile inmates in uh, <coughs> Scambia. That's not a perfect situation because it does create distance for people, not only counsel visiting, but but uh, perhaps even more importantly, family visiting. Um, but that certainly should be an option if you choose to, to seek that. I, again, I, I am sympathetic to that, to that issue, and I would think just by way of just kind of processing it that the jail would rather not have one juvenile female in their jail. They have to make very significant accommodations, and appropriately so, to separate juveniles from adults. Your Honor, if I may, uh, as it relates to the GPS, uh, can we assess that at $1 per yes. day, please? Yes. And just when I submit the order, does the court have any objection if it's possible? I don't know. This, they'll have to take it up with the county. But the families indicated they may be able to post a real property for the bond itself. Um, does the court have uh, any my objection? Generally, 
I know uh, that's outside of the purview. Um, I mean, I, I mean, somebody can present something. I mean, I'm, I'm not in theory opposed to that. I'm just saying that is not something I, I would normally enter into. If you can provide something that I have some authority to do something and you're asking the court to do it, I would certainly be open to it if the law allows for that. I'm just unfamiliar with you. You've raised, I'm unfamiliar with that. Yes, sir. Very good. Judge, that's all I have before the court. May I be excused? Sure, thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. So, we will begin with the um, the arraignment, the the uh, arraignment and pleas, felony plea portion of the docket here today. Uh, one thing that I would, uh, important kind of procedural element is that the court, as is commonly the case with these, uh, the court recognizes that a number of the defendants that are here today do not have attorneys yet. So if that is the situation that you are in, I'm going to be asking and everybody here with a felony charge is allowed to have an attorney and so um, I'm going to be asking you if you want to have an attorney and hopefully you'll accept the appointment if you can't hire a private attorney the rule is you always have a right to hire a private attorney even after today if you can't afford one one will be provided to you that's uh, that's a hallowed part of our law and it's I would say to you each each one of the defendants here today it's it's a very practical important part of this law because you really don't want to be engaging in this stuff in most situations without an attorney so if you don't have an attorney i'm going to ask you if you want an attorney if you accept i'm going to appoint you a, the public defender and i'm going to uh, accept a not guilty plea so that you can then meet with your attorney and consider your case without giving up any legal rights. So I'm just letting you know. You're kind of wondering, what am I doing here? I don't have. An, I don't know what I'm doing. So, those of you who have an attorney, whether it be the public defender or a private attorney, uh, I would uh, hope that you would have contact or have contacted them, and they're kind of aware, and you might be having some discussions today regarding a resolution, possibly. Depends on the case. So with that, uh, we'll go ahead. And if when your name is called, if you will quickly uh, walk up to the front to this podium here, uh, the defendants, and so that we can move the cases as quickly as we can. Should be out of here in <coughs> half hour or thereabouts. Um, Megan Allen Velez. Casey Etheridge from Miss Allen Villas. We're here in 2022 CF 1776, and we'll be entering a plea of not guilty today and setting it for the next pretrial conference date. Okay, so we uh, setting in October still? October? Yes. Yes, sir. So we'll come back October 24th at uh, 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Stephen Arp. Would the state announce? Uh, is this Mr. Stephen Arp? Is that who the court called? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's going to be case number 221833, Your Honor, and the information has been filed. Very good. So, Mr. Arp, as I said, you do have a right to an attorney. You wish to have an attorney yes, appointed? Yes, I do. And I court will guilty. appoint the public defender. Court's going to issue a not guilty plea on your behalf. And we'll come back on October 24th for your pretrial docket day, 9 a.m. Miranda. Ballantyne. Mr. 
State, please. Before the court is Ms. Miranda Valentine on 22 CF 1807. The state has not filed yet on this case. Uh, based on the allegations, the state would be able at this point to file on the DUI and the possession of paraphernalia. But based on the way the report's written, I cannot in good faith file on the possession of controlled substance yet. Waiting for the lab results, and once they come back, I'll then be able to file. So I would just ask for a rearrangement at a later date. Well, I'm going to go ahead and appoint, though. Shouldn't we appoint even? Do we generally appoint when before the information, or we wait for information before we appoint? Let's go ahead and appoint because there is apparently the ability to be able to. Ma'am, do you wish to have an attorney appointed? Oh, no. Ma'am? No? Sure? You really sure? Okay. So we'll come back on rearrangement on uh, when's our next day? September 8th at 2 o'clock. And by that time, probably get information will be filed and you can figure out where we're doing. In the meantime, really think about that lawyer. Okay. Jack Barr. Casey Etheridge for Jack Barr and we're here in 2022 CF 1851. May I have one moment, Your Honor? If we could pass him for a few moments, Your Honor, um, and recall him if you don't mind. Very good. Yeah, I believe we're resolving it today. So. Thank you. Thank you. Ariel Bell. <coughs> Your Honor, Casey Etheridge for Ariel Bell. And for today, we'd be entering a plea of not guilty um, and asking for your next pretrial conference date October 24th, or, well, I guess it'd be the 26th. 26th. Yeah. So, not guilty 26th. plea will be entered and we'll come back for pretrial October 26th, 9 a.m. Thank you. Thank you. Ezalyn Bell Carr. Carr, do you, uh, as I mentioned to you before, you do have, a, this is case number 21CF 1354, you do have a right to an attorney. Do you wish to have an attorney appointed? Yes. Court will appoint the public defender. Court will enter a not guilty plea. And we'll come back on October 24th at 9 a.m. for pretrial. Kelvin Brown. He pled. Is that the one we got this morning? That's right. Thank you. Ronald Corbin. This is Mr. Brown, Your Honor. I believe he was still we, we got about transferred. We resolved this this morning. Ronald Corbin. Oh, Sarah, I'll be Sarah. for Ronald Corbin. And Your Honor, we'd be entering a plea of not guilty um, and setting this for the next pretrial conference date, October 26th. Very good. We'll continue. He'll enter not guilty and we'll come back on October 26, 9 a.m. Thank you. Ashley Cornish. The state would announce on this. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Cornish is before the court on 22 CF 1879, 22 CF 1735, 22 CF 1803. 
Okay. The, so that was the second one you did? 20. The second one is 1735. 22? I don't have Yes, that Your list. Honor. They're all 2022 cases. Okay. So, Ms. Cornish, you do have a right to an attorney in all these new charges. Do you wish to have an attorney appointed? We're yes, here sir. today just on a, on a, a, a plea day. Uh, I put in a motion for a bond modification. Okay. Um, Can we hear that motion today, sir? No, we don't have time. So I'll be glad to, we'll put that on the next uh, miscellaneous calendar, but we don't have time this afternoon. You don't want an attorney? No, sir. Um, Ms. Rivers, what is the offer on this? Would you be willing to accept uh, 30 days credit for time served on the paraphernalia and the possession charge with a $250 fine um, to be run concurrent, um, adjudication withheld, uh, paid prosecution and court cost? charges and would you be willing to accept uh, two years probation on the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon um, a $500 fine court cost prosecution fee we're close if if uh, they're so inclined to discuss it uh, we're, we're close on that okay so do you, you, you want to Okay. Take a break. You want to you want to come with Holder at the break. That's fine, Your Honor. Okay. So just hang tight, and we'll. Yes, sir. Thank you. She's trying to ruin my admonition to always have an attorney. <laughs> okay. It is very important to have an attorney. Kreitz, Angelica Kreitz. Judge, this is 22 CF 1836. Kreitz currently does not have an attorney. I did inform her she could have a public defender appointed today if she wishes, but I did inform her that the state today is offering her to plea to count two of the information, which is a misdemeanor, in exchange to, com uh, to dismiss count one. Um, Ms. Kreitz did inform me that she did wish to enter into a plea of no contest as to count two, and... Um, in exchange, she would receive credit for time served, court costs, cost of prosecution, and she would have 180 days to pay those misdemeanor fines and, and court costs. She reviewed the plea agreement she did sign, and there's no score sheet because it's a misdemeanor, if I may approach. You may. But Ms. Christ, I do have to formally ask, even though the, the attorney offered it on, on behalf of the, the state, but you do have a right to an attorney. Now, I, I know there's been some discussion. You're welcome to have these. It's obviously a pretty good deal that they're offering you, but I do have to offer you the right to an attorney. You wish to have an attorney appointed? Are you just going to decline today? Okay. Very good. So you heard your the, the uh, state uh, explain your offer. Yes, sir. Is that your understanding of what the offer is? And I see that that's been written in the plea and sentencing agreement. And you've signed that. Sir. So have you read this plea and sentencing agreement? Do you feel like you understand it? Because it's got, you know, some yes, legal sir. stuff in here that's, you know, it's legal. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And you feel comfortable with it? I mean, the big part of this plea and sentencing agreement is that by entering this, you're waiving some valuable legal rights. The rights you're waiving is the right to go to a trial, the right to contest it. You're limiting your right to a probation, excuse me, to uh to appeal it, so there and and some other issues as well. So it's, it can be um, significant. Are you comfortable waiving those rights? Okay. And you believe this is in your best interest? Yes, sir. You're entering this freely and voluntarily. Nobody's trying. To, nobody's coercing you to do this, or even offering you an attorney. You can, they'd probably keep this offer open for a little while if you needed to talk with an attorney. But you're comfortable going forward today? Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Based upon that testimony, the court will accept your, your plea and as charged to count two, which is the possession of paraphernalia. Count one, the possession of a controlled substance would be null prost, and you'll get credit for time served. There will are these uh, court costs and cost of prosecution. You'll have to have 180 days to pay, and then it'll go to collections. Sir. Okay. All right. Questions? Okay. No, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
Yeah, I've got uh, Delahoe. Is that one of yours? That was an add-on, I think. I just want to... Uh, Mr. Delahoe, who's got that? It's 22 CF 1704. I don't know. That's correct, Your Honor. You, are you familiar? A, okay, you've got that. It was Is a, that one of yours? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Casey Etheridge for Mr. Holder. We were actually appointed day before yesterday, I guess. We don't have a file yet, so okay. this is... Um, we would be entering a plea of not guilty for today um, and asking to set this for the pretrial conference on 10-24. Uh, October 24th at 9 a.m. pretrial. In the interim, Mr. Uh, Delahoe, make sure and uh, get together with the public defender and go over your case and give you different options and whatnot, okay? Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Davis, Timothy Davis. Timothy Davis. Any Davis. Infer Davis. Timothy Davis. We are appointed Casey Etheridge for Timothy Davis. Um, I've had no contact with him. Yes, for Capius, Your Honor. Or less you Capius. Failure to appear. No bond. Angela Duke. State, go ahead and announce. Yes, Your Honor. Miss Duke is before the court on 22 CF 1865. She's charged with possession of a controlled substance. Miss Duke, you, have you you have been appointed yet? Have you? No. Miss Duke, you do have a right to a appointment of an attorney. Do you wish to have an attorney appointed? Oh no, I'm fine with. Okay. Well, she has a plea agreement, Your Honor. I, I don't know if I typed it up, but she's accepting it from, um, from the state. So. Okay. Well, and I understand why you might not want to be appointed. So go ahead and why don't you explain the offer, uh, Ms. Rivers, if you have that one before you. Your Honor, the uh, offer by the state would be adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, 515 in court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, and 180 days to pay or reduce to judgment. So is that, ma'am, I'm going to, I need to swear you in, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Okay. Do you raise your right hand, do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. Yes, sir. So you heard the, the attorney state the terms of the plea that's being offered to you. Yes, sir. Plea agreement. Is that, uh, are you in agreement with that? I am, and yes, I, sir. This has been written up, Ms. Rivers? Yes, your honor. Okay. And you understand that by entering this plea, I mean, I can see why it's a good plea. It's credit for time served. You'll have to pay court costs. They're always doing the court cost on you. You'll have 180 days, Miss Rivers, to pay the That's court costs. That's correct, Your Honor, and it'd be an adjudication withheld. Okay, withhold of adjudication, which is good for you. Is that, uh, are you, are you comfortable with this agreement? Yes, you believe sir. it's in your best interest to enter I into do, this? Yes, sir. You understand that by entering this, you're waiving the right to go to a trial on this and some other valuable legal rights. You believe this this is better for you to resolve it here today? Yes, sir. I do. Okay. There is a withhold of adjudication, which is helpful. And then uh, you'll get credit for time served, so you won't have any further probation or, or uh, any type of incarceration. And the 615 in court costs, you have 180 days, or you can uh, pay. It'll be reduced to judgment, okay? Okay, thank you. Kelly Ellis. Kelly Ellis. State. State would request a capius. So ordered. Christopher Gorham without bond. State announce, please. Yes, Your Honor. This would be Christopher Wayne Gorham on 22 CF 1863. He's charged with possession of controlled substance. So Mr. Gorham, you do have a right to an attorney. Yes, you wish sir, to have an attorney appointed? No, sir, I don't. 
Okay. Has there been an is there an offer on the table? Yes, Your Honor. Adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, five fifteen, and court costs, hundred dollar cost of prosecution, with one hundred and eighty days to pay. Okay. Let me go ahead and swear you in and yes, ask sir. you some questions. Did I swear you in already? No, Your Honor. <laughs> Do you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth to help you got? I do. So you heard the state's offer. It's a credit for time served. I do. So you won't have to pay any, I mean, you have to pay some costs, but you don't have any jail time or any probation. Yes, sir. It'll be an adjudication. Is it a withhold? It's an adjudication. Okay, so there is an adjudication of guilt, so it's going to be on your record. you got a no. position card. You understand that? Yes, sir, I do. That has legal ramifications. You sure that's what you want to do? <laughs> and you've got uh, $615 in court costs and costs of prosecution. Okay, you have 180 days, six months to pay it, or else it goes to collections. Yes, sir. Is that your understanding of what the deal is? Yes, sir. You I believe understand. it's in your best interest to enter this? I do. Okay, you understand your this final resolution, you're waiving the right to go to a trial? That's fine. Okay, you good with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Nobody's trying to coerce you to get you to enter into this, are they? No, sir. Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will uh, accept your plea agreement, send, and you'll get credit for time served, and the 615 in court costs 180 days to pay. Thank you, okay. Thank you. Yeah, I think you got, sir, you got to get your fingerprints. Yeah, he does. Okay, I Joshua Grace. Your Honor, Mr. Grace is before the court on 22 CF 1887. Agreement in this matter. The only thing I did mention is there is an adjudication. Okay. Mr. Grace. Does she have put withhold? Does it have a price on this? There has to be an adjudication. Right there. It means it can affect your life. What do you mean by affect Mr. Grace, did we announce the case number? I believe we did, Your Honor, but in case I didn't, it's 22 CF 1887. Okay, so Mr. Grace, uh, you know, if you've got, I know there's been, you have some discussions. It's always a little bit tricky when you don't have an attorney. You do have a right to have an attorney appointed. We can, can uh, continue to enter a not guilty plea. You can talk to your attorney, look at the plea they've offered you. And you're not going to, they're not going to pull that plea from me here for, uh, they'll keep it open until we come back for the next hearing. So I'll, I'll take the deal. The take with their offer? Okay. You want to announce the deal? Your Honor, it would be an adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, 515 in court cost, $100 cost of prosecution, pay within 180 days, or reduced to judgment. All three accounts? That's correct, Your Honor. Mr. Grace, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. Okay. You heard the state announce the, the plea agreement, so it's a... Obviously, it'll impact your uh, record because it'll be adjudication of guilt, right? You understand that? And uh, if you will get credit for time served. You're not going to have to spend any, any more incarceration, no probation. Uh, you will have to pay court costs and fees. You have 180 days to pay that. So you understand that by doing this, it's the final resolution of your case. You're waiving the right to go to a trial. You understand all that? You feel like you understand this plea and sentencing agreement? I see you've signed it. Yes, sir. You feel comfortable with it? You believe it's in your best interest to enter into this? Okay. Have any questions? Okay. The court will accept your plea. And the... Um, will sentence you to credit for time served. 615 court costs, cost of prosecution. I have 180 days to pay. John Harvard.
Casey Etheridge for John Harvard. And Your Honor, we'd like to um, enter a plea of not guilty for today and set this for the next pretrial conference on October 26th. Very good. The court will enter a not guilty plea. We'll come back on October 26, 9 a.m. Ryan James. Actually, Your Honor, he was in the court uh, yesterday. Yes, sir. I believe we addressed everything yesterday. Ryan James. Next week, about here. Ryan Dimitri James. Yeah. No, come on in. Come on in. Did we deal with this yesterday, Ms. Um, I don't, I mean, I didn't, I mean, because I think RCC has, he has cases with RCC as well, so I think that oh, may no be the confusion. Okay. okay. But for the record, if you want to enter a, a not guilty plea, in case it was not written down. Yes. Yep. Okay. Not guilty. And so Place on 1026. Yes. Okay, and I would ask that Regional Conflict Council be appointed since they are. He has a bond hearing coming up. Oh, okay. It's supposed to be today. Um, he, he says he was supposed to have a bond hearing today? To have my bond reinstated, sir. He said it was supposed to be done today. That's what I was supposed With to come Ms. back. Flowers, With Ms. Flowers, I guess, because it wasn't. I have not received any bond motion. Yeah, we're except not doing from any. Um, unless the other later lady. this afternoon, we're, we don't have any bond. We had one special. Yeah, notice on notice to have my bond reinstated. Well, that's the same thing. Okay. On the 2 docket? No. Only the lady that was know. representing herself earlier is the only one that's uh, for today that's got the bond motion, other than the add-on that Mr. Stewart did that we've already addressed. So oh. Maybe she just hasn't filed it yet. Probably more important anyway, you get your attorney to argue for you for the reinstatement. So is it, so? Are you substituting regional conflict? No. So I'm just on this one case. They have several other cases. Okay. Yeah. So. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, I don't know anything about the other cases. So if you, I mean, you can go ahead and schedule up the, you yes. know, whenever we have the next hearing, we'll try and deal with the bond hearing if you want. We can probably do yes, it sure. on uh, the 29th. Okay. Of when, sir? September. Okay. I'll send her an email when I leave. We can just put that down for a bond hearing then. But we'll do the regular not guilty and come back on October 26th and then September 29th at, in the morning, 9 a.m., do the bond hearing. Thank you. Thank you. Kamari Joseph. Kamari, Kamari Joseph. Casey Etheridge for Mr. Joseph. We're here in 2022 CF 463. Um, Mr. Joseph would like to um, enter a plea of no contest and accept the state's offer. It'd be for adjudication withheld, credit for time served, $515 in court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, $150 in public defender fees, and 180 days to pay or reduce to judgment. Mr. Joseph, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? You heard your uh, attorney state the terms of your plea. Is that what your, is that what your understanding of the plea agreement is? And are you in agreement with that? Okay. Have you read the, this plea agreement? Because it deals with some legal stuff. You understand you're waiving the right to go to a trial. You're waiving some rights. And when you enter into this plea agreement, you just want to make sure you've had all your legal questions answered by your attorney. You got any questions about what this means? Okay. You believe this is in your best interest to enter into this now? Okay. Very good. Based upon your uh, testimony, the court will accept your plea. Being a, uh, withhold of adjudication, credit for time served. All the court costs and fees have to be paid within 180 days or they go to collection, go to judgment, okay? Any question? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Joshua Lux, Lux, Lux. How do you pronounce your last name? You said it right the last time, Lux. Your Honor, Tim Gibbs on behalf of Mr. Lux and 22 CF 1806. Your Honor, we have reached a plea agreement. I have a written plea as well as a score sheet, if I may approach. Thank you. Thank you. 
Your Honor, those terms, as you can see in the agreement, are um, that he would be pleading to both counts of uttering a forged instrument. He would be placed on a concurrent term of 12 months of community control, followed by 12 months of probation for a total supervision time of 24 months. During that time, Your Honor, um, he would be ordered to pay 415 in court costs plus $100, $100 cost of prosecution as well as a $150 public defender fee. $1,173.32 restitution to Santa Rosa, Sighton Pipe in Milton. Perform 25 hours of community service, not trespass at Brown's Grocery Store in Holt, as well as Santa Rosa, Sighton Pipe in Milton. He'd also, of course, um, be prohibited from having alcohol or drugs without a valid prescription. Great. That's the agreement, Judge. So, Mr. Locks, let me swear you in and ask you a couple questions. Would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court? It's the truth, nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. Yes, sir. So, you heard your attorney state the terms of your plea agreement? Yes, sir. Is that your understanding of what that agreement is? Yes, sir. And I see you signed the back of the actual written plea agreement. Have you gone over this with your attorney? Make sure you understand what it, what all it means. There's a lot of legal stuff in here. Yes, sir. I'm good. No, you're waiving the right to attorney, uh, not to an attorney, to uh, go to a trial. This is the final adjudication of all this. You understand all that? Yes, sir. I believe it's in your best interest to enter into this? Yes, Anybody sir. threaten to course you to get you to enter yeah. into this? You did it freely and voluntarily? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Court will accept your plea. Sentence you to 12 months of community control, followed by 12 months of pro standard probation. All the fees and costs uh, that are contained in the uh, written agreement, as well as the no trespass at Browns and Santa Rosa site and pipe. Uh, this is an adjudication, adjudication of guilt on both counts. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. The defense okay with the score sheet? Yes, no objection. Okay. Go ahead, I'm sorry. The restitution amount is one thousand one hundred seventy-three dollars and thirty-two cents. It's to a Santa Rosa site and pipe. Yes, sir. Macaloosa. Philip Macaloosa. Your Honor, Tim Gibbs on behalf of Mr. Philip Macaluso is present in the courtroom, 22 CF 1739. Your Honor, he's also currently being held on 22 CF 2098, which is set for plea day, uh, September 29th. <coughs> At Mr. Macaluso's request, I do want to make an oral motion to reinstate his bond in the present case. It was revoked, of course, due to a new possession charge that he received recently. Um, he is a combat veteran, has, a, has PTSD, has a TBI. He does have somebody local here that he can be in contact with, as well as myself, um, to ensure that he is in court. Um, <clears throat> and he would be able to ma make that bond if it was reinstated, as well as the current bond on the new case. What's the, what's the current bond? Current bond, I believe he's already bonded out on the current case. That bond was revoked. We're asking to reinstate that. Um, the new case, I believe it was $100 to a bondsman, so it, I think it was $1,000 cash professional, $100 to a bondsman. What's the new charge? Possession, Your Honor. They would object, Judge. He violated within a month of posting bond on the first charge for the exact same charge. I take full responsibility of that, sir. You don't need to speak, okay? Sorry. You have a right to remain silent, so you don't have to say anything. I'm going to deny it this time, but I, I would hope that we could engage in some discussions regarding this. There will be, Judge. Certainly. Because I think there can be some positive outcome. I know it doesn't seem like it now, but uh, this isn't the end. We're going to work with you, try and find out some stuff. Would the <laughs> council approach? <coughs>
We're going to look at vet court. Okay. I know you've expressed some interest in. We're going to give you the details on it, and not. You know, I don't know. We got to kind of see whether because there's criteria and all that. But hang in there with it. Okay. At the end of that tunnel. Okay. I'm going to have Mr. Rivera come talk to you as soon as he can. Okay. Yes. Can yes. we go ahead and enter not guilty? Let's set it for October 24th if we can, yeah. Judge, on both October cases. October Yeah, 24th. Yeah. Staying here until October 24th? Maybe, maybe not. We'll see. We'll have Mr. Rivera come talk to you. Maybe you can get out sooner. We'll have to look at that, okay? There, we have options. They're on the 26th right now. I'm sorry, yes, 26. Thank you, Your Honor. So I'm going to have Mr. Rivera come talk to you about that court as soon as he can, okay? Yeah. Justin Maddox. The state announce. And he also has 22 CF 1754, which I'm indicating Mr. Russell is already on the 1843 case, but not on the 1754 case. Okay, have we already got a plea on the 1843? I don't have that on my calendar. I just have that Mr. Russell's filed a demand for discovery. Has 1843 already been pled? No, sir, it's still open. Okay, so, so on this new, there's a new charge, Mr. Max. You want me to appoint Mr. Russell on that one as well? Okay, so we'll point there. You want to make pleas on both of those, Mr. Russell? Um, yes, if we haven't already, we. Okay. We're going to put a not guilty on, on this uh, 1754, and if you withdrew already, we'll probably go ahead and do the same on the other one. So you'll just have one, the same attorney. I'll look and see if there's a conflict, Judge. If it's been recently that we've drawn the conflict still properly. Very good. Okay. Thank but you. We've got to figure out who your attorney is and try and meet up with them. Okay. What yes, date is the other case set on, Madam Clerk? Yeah, we'll we'll I'll set both of these on on uh, pretrial on ten twenty four. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Trevor McDonald. <clears throat> Your Honor, Tim Gibbs on behalf of Trevor McDonald and twenty two CF one eight three four. Your Honor. Have a written plea agreement in a score sheet if I may approach. You may. Thank you. Your Honor, the terms of uh, Mr. McDonald's <clears throat> plea on this case for a no contest plea, he would be adjudicated guilty, be sentenced to credit for time served, and then uh, the standard for, uh, fines and costs. Uh, I believe it's. Very good. Mr. McDonald, would you raise your right hand? You swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, <clears throat> nothing but the truth, so help you God. Sir. I don't know where the signature line is on that. I'm not sure. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Get it a bit out of order. That's where I got it. Okay. Just wanted to check it out. Very good. Okay, so state states in agreement? Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. McDonald, you uh, heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement. You understand you've signed the plea and sentencing agreement. Have you gone over all the details? Made sure you asked any legal questions, well, how it affects your record, et cetera? Waiving the right to a trial, do you understand all that? Yes, sir. Yes? Let's speak up. We're actually recording this. That's why. Yes, sir. Okay. So, um, and you believe this is in your best interest to enter into this here today? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Based upon that testimony, the court will accept your plea. No contest. There will be adjudication of guilt, credit for time served. 615 court cost, $150 in, in a public defender fee. Isn't it 515 in court cost? 515 for drugs. That includes the $100 cost of prosecution. Uh, 615 plus 150 PD fee. 
all payable in 180 days or it'll go to collections, okay? Yes, sir. Any you questions? Go, uh, you can go get a payment plan with the clerk. Yes, sir. Okay, any questions? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Sorry. Tanya Metz. Your Honor, this is 22 CF 1811. Ms. Metz has been charged by information with one count of possession of controlled substance, one count of possession of drug paraphernalia. She currently does not have an attorney appointed, so I did speak with her. I informed her she did have the right to have a public defender appointed today or to hire her own attorney. She elected to proceed forward with the current offer from the state which is plea is charged to count two, the misdemeanor, null pros count one. She would receive on count two an adjudication of guilt, credit for time served, $270 court costs, $50 cost of prosecution, and she would have 180 days to pay. There's no score sheet because it's a misdemeanor, and she has signed the plea agreement, if I may approach. May. Ms. McDonald, would you uh, raise your right hand, please, and let me swear you in. Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, it's effort. It's, it's Metz, not McDonald. But I'll still raise my hand. It's Metz, not McDonald. So you heard the attorney, uh, the state attorney, uh, explain the terms of your plea agreement. Yes. So plea is charged to count two, uh, dismiss count one, you'll get credit for time served, and then the cost and fees to be paid in 180 days. Is that your understanding of what the fee agreement, uh, yes, the plea agreement is? You believe it's in your best interest to enter into this? I do. I understand this is wrapping everything up. No. You're waving the right to go to You've heard me say it a hundred times yeah. today. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I understand. Any, any questions you have about what this means to you from a legal standpoint? No, sir. Okay. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea. Thank plea you. is charged to count two, null process count one, and uh, credit for time served. All costs paid 180 days, or it goes to collections. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day. Damian Mitchell. Your Honor, I represent Mr. Mitchell in 22 CF 1615. My understanding, Your Honor, is that he is currently in the Escambia County Jail on a VOP due to these new charges. Um, <clears throat> I would just like to, if I could possibly go ahead and tender a not guilty on his behalf. So we can try to get him transported later on if need I mean, be. We confirm that he's over there. I can look now if you would like, Judge. Just if he's not over there, you need, like, I can look today and update the court today. I'll, I'll allow a not guilty plea to be entered. That's, I'm assuming it is, but if he's not there, if somebody would let me know. We'd probably take a different course. But we're lendered not guilty. You want to just come back on the pretrial? Uh, 10, 10, 26 or 24, either one. October 20. We'll go 26 are the inmates. So Very well. Okay. My confirmation, Your Honor, is that he is currently still in the Scambia County Jail. So um, I've got Devin Napier, which is a regional conflict case. Judge, this is 22 CF 1889. Mr. Napier has been charged by information with one count of possession of controlled substance. Oh, they have? Okay. So your attorney has already submitted a written not guilty plea. Yes, sir. Okay. So you've been, in, obviously, be in contact with her. We're going to come back uh, on October 24th at 9 a.m. for pretrial. And just try and meet up with your attorney before then and kind of go over what your options are. I actually are. don't know who my attorney is because um, my girlfriend that I was arrested with, we had the same attorney, mm -hmm. and that was a conflict of interest, so then I was supposed to get a new attorney, and I haven't had any information because I'm from that's, Indiana. That's why, you, that's why you've got Ms. Flowers. That's the, all, that's the conflict counsel. Ms. Uh, the other, your your, your uh, girlfriend probably got the public defender when they're standing. Those are the ones that are right behind you. So Ms. Flowers... Is, is the regional conflict, it's the conflict council. So you've got the right attorney. Flowers is the one. Uh, How do I get in contact with her? Jennifer Flowers. Jennifer Flowers, okay. Do you have a, a number? What? It's called regional conflict council. Yeah, it'll be in the phone book. We should have a number for you, but we don't. Okay. okay thank you. Okay, thank you. Good luck. David Nelson.
Gracias. Your Honor, Mr. Can uh, Mr. Nelson is charged with a single count of failure to register in case number 22-1795. And information has been formally filed and offer has been extended. Your Honor, Tim Gibbs on behalf of Mr. Nelson, 22 CF 1795. This morning, or this afternoon, Your Honor, he'd like to enter a plea of not guilty. If we could leave this on pretrial 1024, um, seek to resolve yeah, we'll it. We'll come back, day. enter not guilty plea, and come back on October 24th at 9 a.m. Thank you very much. Yeah. Jacob Packard. Packard. Judge, if I could have just a moment. Did you didn't bring Pryor back over here, too. We did him this morning, right? Yeah. But he does not need to be here. She can always petition to change him later. All Mr. Russell's Sure. Okay, great. Yep, I know. Thank you very much. Charles Russell Public Defender's Office, Judge, this is Jacob Packard. Uh, the case on the docket is 22 CF 1877. Um, Mr. We've reached a plea agreement with the state. Um, in exchange for a plea of no contest on count one, it's going to be a withhold of adjudication. On count two, it's going to be an adjudication of guilt. It will be 12 months probation on each count concurrent. Waive the cost of supervision. Pay court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, $150 public defender fee. Submit to a substance abuse evaluation and any recommended treatment. Uh, be subject to random urinalysis. He can have no alcohol or drugs during the probation without a prescription. He would complete the anger management course, uh, a mental health evaluation, and any recommended treatment, including taking prescribed medications. And he has to have no contact with Julia Packard. And I have a score sheet if I may approach. I need, this, I need counsel to approach.
Very good. So, Mr. Packard, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Okay, you heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement. Is that your understanding of what the agreement is? Yes, sir. And you understand that by entering this agreement, you're going to waive the right to go to a trial and you're giving up some valuable legal rights. You understand that? Yes, sir. I see you've signed the plea and sentencing agreement. Have you um, gone over this plea and sentencing agreement with your attorney? Make sure you understand the legal aspects of it. Yes, sir. And you're entering this freely and voluntarily. No questions? Yes, sir. Okay. And the defense is okay with the score sheet? Yes, Your Honor. Very good. Based upon that, Mr. Packard, the court will accept your plea agreement. The court will withhold adjudication as to count one. There will be an adjudication of guilt as to count two, 12 months of probation for each count. It will run concurrent, so it will run at the same time. Waive cost of supervision, be various court costs, etc. There will be a substance abuse evaluation and any recommended treatment, random urinalysis, etc. Anger management. Uh, complete that course, mental health evaluation. So all those recommendations are really, that's the important stuff. So yes, sir. Hopefully you can work on that and really go after it early because you only got 12 months of probation. Exactly. It's a short time. You think about it. I mean, it'll turn around and you'll be at the six-month mark. Okay, so anything else that's contained in this plea and sentencing agreement? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Terrence Parker. I assume it was on behalf of Terrence Parker and 22 CF 1726. I understand that there was a filing in the court file from North Okaloosa Medical Center that he was supposed to quarantine for until August 31st. I'm not sure exactly how the court wants to approach that. Um, he was quarantining due to COVID and due to some respiratory issues that he was having due to that. I'll just bring him back. I'll just, why don't we just continue the arraignment? That works for me, Your Honor. You can enter a written plea. I mean, you've already been, that. he's been appointed. If you want to written, you know, we'll, we'll, why don't we do the, the uh, rearrangement for, uh, that for pretrial? Is that the 8th or do you want to do the 6th? Uh, October 6th. September, September 6th for pretrial or, or not for, I'm not, that's docket day. Having to get used to these. Let's go, yeah, let's do, let's do a rearrangement on October 6th and then, if there's a written, uh, no, not guilty, you have a written not guilty plea, then we'll just, we'll also set this for October 24th. Okay. So that's the regular pretrial. So we'll set it for both. So that, and then September, excuse me, October 6th. But again, you get the written not guilty, and that'll, you can uh, cancel that one. Okay. That works. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. No, October 6th. Okay. Well, we could do September 8th. Yeah, there's two more before that. Uh, September 8th is acceptable for me, Your Honor. Okay, right? September 8th. Okay, very good. Thank you, Your Honor. Then Patterson, I think we dealt with already. Uh, Malia Prior. If I pronounce that right. How do you pronounce your name? Prior, Your Honor. Prior? Prior. Prior. Sorry. <laughs> Just speak up because he's going to have some questions for you. Your Honor, Tim Gibbs on behalf of Malia Pryor in 22 CF 1895. We have reached an agreement with the state if I may approach this portion. May. Thank you. I'm going to go ahead and announce the agreement. Your Honor, she's charged with the uh, one count of possession of controlled substance methylphenidate and one count of possession of, a, of paraphernalia. On both counts, Your Honor, she would plead no contest. She would receive a withhold of adjudication, credit for time served, uh, court costs, um, appropriate court costs, I think that's 100 costs of prosecution, 515 court costs, 150 PD fee, due within 180 days, um, and that would be the... Total, total terms of the sentence, Your Honor. Good state in agreement? Yes. yes. Sir. Okay, Ms. Pryor, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Okay, you heard your attorney state the terms of your plea agreement. Is that You can put your hand down. Aye. That's all right. 
You, is that your understanding of what the plea agreement is? Yes, sir. Withhold adjudication for both. You'll get credit for time service. You don't have to serve any more time. No, no probation. You got fees and costs, but there is a withhold. So I mean, you, know, you got to. It affects your record. So I just want to make sure you've gone over with your attorney. This is what you believe is in your best interest. Yes, sir. Okay. Do you have any questions about what we're doing? Okay. Based upon your testimony, the court will accept your plea. Withhold adjudication for both counts. Credit for time served. All the court costs, fees, etc., payable in 180 days. Defense is okay with the score sheet. No objection, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. Good luck, ma'am. Thank you. That's just your information, your formal charges. Stephen or Stephen Stephen Renfro. The state announced he doesn't have an attorney. This is 22 CF 1785. Mr. Renfro has been charged by information with one count of possession of controlled substance, driving while license suspended, and possession of drug paraphernalia. He's currently not represented with, by anyone. Okay. So, Mr. Renfro, you do have a right to an attorney in these charges? You wish to have an attorney appointed? Yes, sir. Okay. Court will appoint the public defender. Court's going to issue a not guilty plea. We'll come back on October 24th at 9 a.m. for pretrial. Thank you. Just stay in touch, and you may have some discussions about this in the meantime. Tabitha Rents. But if I could just have a moment. And judge, for the record, this is 22 CF 1765. She also has 19 CF 1881. Thank you. 22 CF 1881? 19 CF 1881 oh, and 19. 22 CF 1765. Correct. Um, Charles Russell, public defender for Ms. Rents, who's present. Um, the 19 CF is a VOP judge, so if we haven't already, we'll deny on that. And the 22 case is uh, set for felony plea day today, so at this time we're going to enter a plea of not guilty, request trial by jury, and 15 days to file any pre round motions. We'll come back on October 26th for pretrial at 9 a.m. Okay. Did you get the other one on the violation to deny? Yes, we'd like them both to track to 1026. Right. Jared Riley. The state announced. You just come, come over here. Got it. Mr. Jared Riley is here in case number 221745. He has been charged by information for three counts of child neglect without great bodily harm. Mr. Riley, you do have a right, as I mentioned. Oh, I'm not guilty, but I can. I, I wanted to say something, if that's possible. Hold on a second. Let's just take one step at a time. Yeah, you can say something. Okay. Uh, you do have a right to an attorney. The purpose of this hearing today is just to get, enter a plea. Okay. If you do have a right to an attorney, you're going to... Uh, Hire a private attorney, or you want a public defender? Well, my co-defendant has a public defender, so they said it was a conflict of interest, so I wouldn't be appointed one. Okay. Well, we have to appoint one, and then they'll rotate out. Okay. So, but today, I'm going to just go ahead and appoint, and then but you're right. Will there'll be a conflict, and it'll go to the it'll go to the office of regional conflict. But I'm going to go ahead and enter a not guilty. I assume that's what you want to do here today. Yeah. Correct, Judge. And then we'll uh, come back on October 24th at 9 a.m. And you should get notice of your the proper attorney, and then you can meet up with them. All right, thank you. Okay. Joseph Tolls. Tolls. Judge, this is 22 CF 1774. Mr. Tolles, you do have a right, as uh, I mentioned before, to an attorney with this charge. You wish to have an attorney appointed. You're going to hire private counsel. 
I want to hire a private attorney. Okay. So, um, do you are are you have you identified him? Are you ready to go? Have you hired yet? Have you hired? Uh, I mean, nobody's nobody's made a, a appearance in your case yet. I plan on hiring one. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and enter a not guilty plea on your behalf. I assume that's what you want to do. Right. And then we'll uh, we'll come back on October 24th at 9 a.m. That's like over a month away. You got to do two things before then. You not only got to hire an attorney, but you got to meet with that attorney before that day. Right. Okay. So you need to go over this. This is. Not insignificant. You need to get your legal advice. Make sure you're properly represented. Okay. October twenty fourth, nine a.m. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Witherspoon, Nicola Wither Witherspoon. CF one eight two. The defendant's been charged by information with possession of controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia. She's not represented by an attorney, but um, I spoke with her and, well, I spoke informed of the offer, and I think she wishes to have a public defender. Very good. You do have a right to have an attorney appointed? You wish to have an attorney appointed? Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. The court will appoint the public defender. The court's going to issue a not guilty plea. We'll come back on October 24th at 9 a.m., and in the meantime, just meet up with your public defender, and they'll go over the case with you. Yes, sir. And Judge, I did indicate to Ms. Witherspoon that I would leave the offer open okay. for her until pre -trial. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Shannon Webb. Would the state announce on this one? This is 22 CF 1768. This has been charged by information with one count of possession of control substance. Okay. okay. Judge, she's currently not represented by an attorney. I did speak with her regarding the state's offer. If she'd like to plead today, I informed her she had the right to have a public defender appointed as well. Um, I informed her of the offer of a withhold of adjudication with credit for time served, court costs, and costs of prosecution. Um, at first, she was thinking public defender. Now she's indicated that she wants to take the offer. So if she's still interested, I can provide her with a plea form to review. I want to take the offer of the states. Okay. So we'll pass over this to you on a, so you can give her a, a plea form. And I will, Judge. I'll fill that out. Okay. So just hang around. They'll get you. Well, you got to actually get a written plea form. Okay. And you need to read that when she gives it to you. It's got the... The plea agreement, but it's got some other stuff on it, so you're going to have to take a couple minutes and read it, okay? Worley. An Angel Angel Angelia Worley. You just come up to the podium, ma'am. Worley's She's charged with possession of controlled substance and possession of drug paraphernalia. So, Ms. Worley, you do have a right to an attorney with these new charges. You wish to have an attorney appointed? Yes. Court will appoint the public defender, enter a not guilty plea, and will come back on October 24th for a pretrial, 9 a.m. Okay? Thank you very much. Westbrook, Ashley Westbrook. Westbrook. Russell Public Defender's Office, Judge. I believe we have a plea agreement. Thank you, Judge. Um, in exchange for a plea of no contest as charged, uh, it will be an adjudication withheld, time served, court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, $150 public defender fee, and 120 days to pay. And I have a score sheet too. That's the agreement, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Ms. Westbrook, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth? So I help you, God. I do. Okay, Ms. Westbrook, you heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement. Is that your understanding of the yes. plea agreement? And you're 
You're in agreement with that? Yes. I see the same thing is in the written plea agreement. Have you gone over this written plea agreement with your attorney? Because it's got some other legal stuff in here. Make sure you understand what this all means legally. And you're, you understand that by entering this, you're waiving the right to go to a trial. This is the final adjudication of your case. You believe this is in your best interest to enter into this plea? I do. Very good. Based upon that uh, testimony, the court will uh, accept the plea agreement. Um, adjudication will be withheld on the single count. You'll get credit for time served. Court costs, PD fee, have 120 days to pay, um, or it'll go to judgment. Okay? Thank you. And the defense is okay on the score sheet? Yes, Your Honor. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Michael Wise. Charles Russell Public Defender's Office, judges, is Michael Wise. Case number is 22 CF 1841. If I could have a moment. This time, judges, here for a felony plea day. At this time, we're going to enter a plea of not guilty, or request trial by jury in 15 days to file any pre room motions. Very good. The court will uh, enter the not guilty plea. Come back for pretrial on October 26th at 9 a.m. Thank you, Judge. Okay, I know we've got we've got at least one that we need to double back on, but we'll take a, our break and then f try and uh, deal with the last couple ones, and then we'll do our two o'clock talk. I know we're running a little late, but uh, a couple of those got got resolved prior, so it should go fairly quickly. We should be able to finish up this afternoon.
Please be seated. Ms. Bossal, that order has been signed. Thank you so much, Your Honor. My so, uh, court security informed me that we had uh, an additional inmate, Joseph LeDuc, who apparently is on our, I'm just, it's not on mine, but somehow it's, he's on so. No, no. I just told him we'll bring him out and I don't know. I don't even think any information has been filed. Well, Judge, um, I don't That's have... That's what I was told, but... I don't have the case because it was just opened in benchmark yesterday. Yeah. Here, I, you, want me, you want me to give you the case? It's 22 CF 2190. I have looked it up in benchmark, and I saw that it was opened yesterday. Um, so I do, don't have an information filed, but I believe this was a citation that was issued for driving my license suspended with prior convictions. Okay. I think I remember what happened because the jail called me. So that case that we put out on him before, this charge, I think, comes out of that same set of circumstances, but for some reason it got split off, I think, if this is the one I'm thinking of. And so he, they never released him. He, when he pled back on August the 4th, this charge somehow popped up, and so the jail held on to him. And August so, the 4th? Yes. So... Um, I think that's I think that's this case. Yes, sir. Is that right? okay. Yes, sir. I've, I've still been incarcerated. So I don't even have oh, a what, file. What what what? I'm I'm familiar with what the. Sorry, I don't remember exactly what the plea. Was it a resolution? Was he supposed to get out? It says he got on the. That was just the only. Was this case? When was when did this event occur? According to the citation, I believe it was July twenty first of twenty twenty one. Prior to the the plea agreement on the other thing, so it should have been wrapped up. But I mean, you know, I don't know. I think this is the one that Lieutenant Roper at the jail called me and said. Was this your, were, were you here? Do you remember it? Yes. I, yes, I know sir. you remember oh, it. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were talking. I remember pleading this case out, and if this is, if I'm thinking of the right one, Lieutenant Roper called me and said that somehow I got separated from the other case, but they're all really the same case. But the plea, but when you saw the plea, did it contain this on it? I thought, I thought it was all... I thought it was all continued. I, I was led to believe I was going to be getting out. When well, I, got I understand back. that. I mean, I I'm, believe me. I mean, I know it doesn't always seem like we don't want to try and keep people, you know, I, you know, that aren't supposed to be there. I, and I mean that in all sincerity. We've got enough people that deserve to be there. Um, what? Pass it for a few minutes. That's my recollection of what's going on. What's I know. the other case number? Uh, the new one or the old one? The old one is 22 CS 1420. That's the one he pled on. I just wanted to look at the, the, uh, the plea agreement. So the, the one that was pled out was driving while license suspended, third. What was this one? It's the same charge, driving while license suspended. The citation from the one that we're here for today is from July 21st of 2022. And what about the one? The one he already pled to. That is from May 24th of 2022. The one that was pled was the arrest was on May 26th. It was a couple months later, but it was both of them were prior to the.
Your Honor, based on review of the citation from um, July 21st of 2022, the defendant has been in custody since he pled originally, since August 4th of 2022. It's a, it's a driving charge, so the state would have no objection if defend, defense counsel wanted to enter a plea today um, of no contest to be adjudicated to the charge of driving while license suspended, the felony, and given the credit time served, he already has with the court costs and costs of prosecution. Because there's actually additional credit for time served because yes, sir. he should have gotten out on the 4th, yes, sir. not on this event. So, I've, talked to, I've talked to Mr. Leduc, judge, judge, and he does want to go ahead and plead no contest and accept the state's offer. Okay. So, this one? I was going to tear it out. Okay. Um, so let me just ask you a couple questions. So um, how do you pronounce it? Is it Ledoux? Ledoux. Ledoux? Yes, sir. Mr. Ledoux, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. So I, mean, I know you want to enter into this plea agreement, get out of jail and all that, but I just want to make sure that you, you're you comfortable, that you know this isn't, a, you know, you're, you're uh, you had, it does have some legal ramifications. Just want to make sure you've had all your questions answered by your attorney, and that you you know you feel comfortable that this is a proper move at this point. I'm will I'm willing to enter into it, uh, and I believe you've you know like you say you've been in since even if we don't even look at the other stuff you've been in since August 4th, when I mean, you shouldn't have been in I, except for this case. Whether or not I'm not saying whether you should or shouldn't on this, but it seems like there may have been a. a, a mess up a little bit so um, I just want to make sure you're comfortable with that and you've had all your questions answered from your attorney yes sir okay um, so based upon that the court will accept the the plea uh, no contest plea the court will uh, order the hill that you receive credit for all time served you no know, further probation or incarceration you can get out immediately and uh, what do we do on the court costs and stuff, fees? We have standard court costs and fees? Yes, sir, it'll be the standard uh, fees and the $100. And that will just, what do we do on the last minute, go to collections? Yeah, 120 days, 
Mayor. or go to collections. Okay. And for Madam Clerk, that's statute number 322.34, sub 2, sub C. Main thing is you got to get out so you can go to work so you can start paying some of this stuff that's building up. Right? I got two jobs and trying to get back to FedEx. Okay. Thank you, sir. Good luck. Okay. Now, do we have any uh, from this morning? Yes, Your Honor. We have oh, Jack Barr. A little late. Pardon? We have Jack Barr. Jack Barr. Okay. That's right. Marnie, we have uh, Barr. Is he coming up? And then we've got one other case after this, Cornish. Politic. Cornish, and then we'll proceed with our 2 o'clock DACA. I know we're running a little bit late. Well, we've also got Shannon Webb. We've got three we've She's got to She's ready, do. too, Your Honor. Okay. In the case of Fridge for Jack Barr, I'm here in 2022 CF1851. Yeah, this is Okay. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Mr. Barr would like to um, enter a no contest plea and accept the state's offer. Account one, it would be adjudication of guilt, 30 days in county jail with credit since arrest on July 19th of 2022 on this case. Um, and then count two, adjudication of guilt, 12 months of probation consecutive to count one. So after he serves the jail sentence, cost supervision waived, $100 cost of prosecution, $150 in public defender fees. $415 in court costs, obtain or clear to the extent possible that, that, um, so he can work on getting a valid driver's license. You may. Mr. Barry, how is that normally worded when, you, when you're like just good faith effort to obtain the driver's license that you've made application even if that, that's correct your honor okay good faith effort. okay Thank you, Mark. Get his <laughs> come on mr barry <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't know me <laughs> Okay, Mr. Barr, would you please raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. You heard your attorney state the terms of your plea agreement, the yes, core sir. of which, obviously, adjudication of guilt on both. You've got 30 days in the county jail, but you'll have credit for time served, which appears to be more than you've been in longer than your 30 days. You can put your hand down. So you'll be able to get out of that, but you'll have 12 months of probation starting when you get out, correct? Yes sir. yes, sir. You understand all that? Yes, sir. And you've had a chance to, you know, you've been through this before. You understand that this has legal ramifications. You're waiving the right to go to trial. You understand all that? You've had all your legal questions answered from your attorney? Yes, sir. State's in agreement on all this, right? State's in agreement. Ms. Yes, Your Honor. Yes. So, um... Very good. Based upon your knowledge of all this, I assume you have a good understanding and the court will uh, accept the plea and sentencing agreement. There'll be an adjudication of guilt, uh, 30 days in the county jail for resisting, 
with credit for time served since uh, 719 of this year, 12 months of probation for count two. All fees and costs. Um, and obtainer cleared to the extent possible to get a valid driver's license. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay, good luck. And the defense is okay with the score sheet, right? Yes, Your Honor. No objection. Thank you. Okay, so we've got uh, Corning. Web. Web. You want to do Web? Web. This is 22 CF 1768. Ms. Webb currently does not have an attorney. However, I've conveyed an offer to her that she's indicated she wishes to accept. That would be to plea as charged to the one count that she's charged with uh, possession of a controlled substance. She would plea no contest in exchange. She would receive a withhold of adjudication, credit for all time served, $515 in court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, and she would be given 180 days to pay those monies. And she has signed the plea agreement, and um, I do have a score sheet if I may approach. <coughs> Ms. Webb, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. Yes. And uh, you just heard uh, as well the state kind of go over the terms of the plea agreement. Is that, did they state it correctly? And is that what you're wanting to do here today for by way of a plea agreement? Yes, sir. And you understand, I see you've signed the plea and sentencing recommendation that um, did you read through this to make sure you understand? Do you have any questions regarding this plea agreement? Yes, sir. You do. You know, this does affect your legal rights by entering this. You're waiving the right to go to a trial, the right to appeal this, kind of a final resolution of this, so you can't really go back. You know, fine. Buyer's remorse doesn't work very good in this. <laughs> That's fine. Okay? So I just want to make sure you're comfortable with it. And I know you don't have an attorney, but you are you feel comfortable enough yes. that uh, you believe you can accept this? Yes, sir. Okay. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea here today. Um, there will be uh, an adjudication of guilt on the sole charge. You'll get credit for time served. And then the fees and costs, you'll have 180 days to pay. Okay? If not, it'll go to collections after that. Was that withheld or withhold? I'm sorry. I said adjudicated, and it's a withhold. Thank you. Okay. Sorry. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I think we have one more. Corbin? Uh, no, Cornish. Cornish. Who on the state's handling Cornish? Cornish. Yes, Your Honor. We have, is she up? Uh, Your Honor, I do not know if she's going to accept the state's offer. I did send it back to her. Okay. You want to bring her out and then we'll, we'll either. So, Ms. Cornish, you've had a chance to review the uh, plea and sentencing agreement, so you've got a couple of options. Yes, sir. Uh, if, you, if you have any questions, you can um, the state, hold on, hold on. You can either accept the offer, but I don't have any problem with appointing you an attorney, and you can come back, and, you know, if you have any questions regarding this, this plea is not going to be taken off the table today. So, I, I don't think it will. I think you'll at least op leave it open for a little while, so. I don't want you to feel like you're being pressed to enter into any type of uh, or course to being entered into a, into a plea agreement. That's not what we're trying to do here, but you can if you want to. So with that, have you had a chance to review that? And what's your 
What's um, your feelings about that? One um, question, Ms. Rivers. Would you be willing to accept, instead of six months of uh, CC, to do three years of probation instead of 18 months? And all the other stipulations I would honor. Like, honor. And no weapons. No, no more no knives. Weapons. No, no more knives. All right, say it. We'll do it. Thank you. Okay. So would you announce... The, hold on. So let Miss Rivers. She's going to announce the plea agreement. All and right. So that you. would be thirty-six months of probation, mental health evaluation, complete any recommended treatment, anger uh, counseling, no contact with Patty Jones or her property at fourteen seventy-three Vincent Ray Road in Baker, no contact with Brett Barnhill. Do not go to his property at six six eight. Five Highway 185, Baker, Florida. Court costs seven hundred sixty-seven dollars on the uh, case number seventeen thirty-five. On case number eighteen oh three, it's four fifteen, and it's five fifteen on eighteen seventy-nine. And of course, waive cost of supervision. What's the charges on twenty-two CF seventeen thirty-five? Aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Okay. Now that would be an adjudication. Yes, ma'am. But you already had you, you already have that. So. Okay. So you're waiving your right to a trial. I am. Yes, ma'am. You're waiving your right to everything except to appeal the sentencing if you have an issue with the way he does the sentencing. Yes, ma'am. So you would sign that there. I'm sorry. Yes. Here's your score sheet. Thank you, ma'am. I appreciate y'all's time today. Oh, he's got it. He's got it. I'm going to still ask you a few questions. Okay. So, Ms. Cornish, would you raise your right hand again? Let me swear you in. Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court? The truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do, Your Honor. Okay. Your Honor, this would be a downward departure plea. So, Ms. Cornish, you've had the state has explained the terms of the plea agreement with you, and that the terms are also contained in a hastily prepared sentencing recommendation. Yes, thank you so, so much for your. Uh, I just want to make sure that, I mean, it, obviously there's, you know, this uh, some serious charge, particularly the one. The one charge you, that you have on 1735, um, but it's important that you understand that you, this does have legal ramifications. You're waiving the right. There will be, uh, you'll be uh, adjudicated guilty on all these charges, so it'll be on your record. Do you understand all that? Yes, sir. I can go back and petition at a later date to have those records sealed per extenuating circumstances? You can always do whatever the statute allows you to do with regards to expungement and whatnot. I'm not telling you exactly. I don't want to make any promise. Hey, you can get this. Right? And, Your um, Honor, the victim is present on that particular case, and she is in agreement with this officer. Okay. Well, I appreciate you telling me that. May, may we so, oh, no, no, no violent no. contact instead of no violence? No. Okay. No, not at this point. No, that's something that... At some point later, you can come back and redress. So, no, ma'am, look at look toward me. This is important. Main thing you got to do on this right here is follow it to a T. Be in communication with your probation officer. You got to really be careful. You're on this probation, but these no contacts and no trespass. Everybody takes them real serious, and this is one, when you're on probation and you violate one of these things, boom. Yes, you're sir. right back, in, you know, in a, in a jumpsuit. They, they don't fool around. So you need to be, if somebody approaches you, somebody calls you, they're not in violation. You are. Even if you didn't even, they walked up to you in public, you're in violation. Yes, sir, I am very... So I want you, now that's... I will tell you that's never a problem. But but I just want you to be aware 
that it is your responsibility to recede. Okay? People aren't going to be unreasonable, but you've got to you got to stay away. If you walk into a restaurant and somebody's already there, you got you got to just turn around and walk away. Okay? I got a right to be there. No, actually you don't anymore. Okay? So you just you know, for the next few years you gotta really play it tight so you don't get in any further trouble. But open the lines of communication with your probation officer, they'll walk through exactly what you what you need to do with regards to any type of Counseling and services and the assessment, uh, evaluations and stuff, okay? Yes, sir. Thank you. So, do you have any other questions? I know you, you know, don't have an attorney, but you seem to be clear about what you wanted to do and you're comfortable with this. Nobody coerced you to get you to enter into this, did they? No, sir. They did not. I enter it voluntarily and in good faith. Okay. And this actually is a downward departure. That's a legal term which means under the sentencing guidelines, the minimum sentence was a little over a year in the Department of Corrections. So, anyway, very good. Good luck. Thank you so much for your time, sir. And actually this afternoon as well, uh, the first part of this afternoon. Okay. So continuing on with our our docket, I know that, you know, the, the, the Harper sentencing probably will take a uh, longer period of time. Do, is there anything we just need to announce? We've only got seven cases. The Aikens. And the Arwood cases are both continued? Yes, Judge. We yes, don't Judge. have to take any act. I mean, those are already. I can just put it on the record for the sure. clerk if you want me to. So Devin Aikens, case number 20 CF 1042, 19 CF 1457, 19 CF 2757. I've already spoken to Mr. Aikens in the back and told him what we're going to do. Um, if we were going to ask for a continuance on the sentencing, um, if you want to. It was actually just going to be a sentencing on the two 2019 cases, but we have a global offer that I need to talk to them about. So if we could set it for a control date, say, um, September 6th. Okay. And then I can see if he wants to take it or not, and if he doesn't, then we can set it for a lengthier sentencing hearing. Okay. So we'll come back on September 6th, essentially for a, what do we call it, a status? Now that's your docket day, Judge. I don't know if that's a big deal. We can do it the eighth if you want to. That's all right. Okay. Then a Yarwood. Mr. Yarwood, we're going to ask for a continuance too, Judge. Um, it's going to be a lengthier sentencing hearing because we're probably going to have testimony from Dr. McDonald and or somebody from REAP. So we would need 45 minutes, an hour maybe. We just need to schedule that. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, who, who's handling that? Yeah, that's mentioned? mine. Okay. There's no so objections to continue. The reason why I was didn't want to do October 6 because if Miss Nils was handling that one, so October 6 is that is that too soon or does that work? I mean, that's a little over a month, month and a half. Should be fine, Your Honor, unless I'm picking a jury, and I can always have Miss Barrickman then cover sure. if we need to. Okay. So October 6. Um, 2 p.m. 2 p.m. And Your Honor, Mr. Yarwood's my last case. May I be excused? You may. Y yes, Mr. Yarwood and Mr. Aikens can be returned. Okay. And Judge, going back to Joseph Ledoux that we dealt with earlier. Yes, sir. Um, I spoke to the state. We wanted to have that as an adjudication withheld. Okay. We just want to make that clear for the record, and then he he can go back if y'all want to just tell him. 
And we changed it to adjudication withheld. Mr. Ledoux. Ledoux. No objection. He can go back because I think he's being released today. Yes, hopefully. Hopefully. Okay. Now, uh, Curtis Farrell, we conducted that uh, evidentiary yesterday afternoon. And then um, number um, two on this, uh, Zachary Gines, if I pronounce that right, that, that was canceled, that hearing. And then the only other case other than the River Harper um, sentencing is Autumn Bryant. It was a plea is that it's on here. I just wanted to get, you know, I know yes, sir. our purse is going to be a little longer. I, that, this one should be fairly short because I, right. I believe Autumn it's just Bryant. her. Is, is, is yeah. she still here? It should be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Casey Etheridge for Autumn Bryant. We're here in 2020 CF 2623, um, and we're here for sentencing. She pled straight up to the court, and um, she would like to offer um, testimony for the court to consider. Approach. We're going to do the, the um, we've got one other sentencing before that, before yours. So if, if you'll just hang with us for a little while, we'll come back to you. We will get, get you uh, done here today, okay? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. She's coming, yeah. She's, we're going to keep her. Okay. River Harper. Thank you. Though. Hard to keep you waiting, Mr. Gilbert. Oh, no problem, you're on. Got you later. Okay. Here. We'll go ahead and announce the case. And yes, Your Honor. Here, we're here for sentencing on River Harper on 21 CF 2214. And representing River Harper, uh, Michael Gilbert. Uh, on July 1st, she pleaded no contest to misdemeanor assault on an LEO, making false report to LEO, and felony tampering with evidence. By stipulation with state, the maximum incarceration was capped at three years on an open plea. We have clarified that. PSI was ordered by the court, and we are back today for sentencing. She scores 22.2. Um, just wanted to ensure the court had received the PSI and the memorandums from state and defense, an affidavit from her father, who is also present. The court has received and reviewed all those documents. Thank you, Your Honor. 
Your Honor, at this time, uh, the state would like to call the victim in this case. Uh, he's now an investigator, Investigator Brandon Small. Would you please raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do, sir. Please be seated. Ms. Rivers? Would you please state your name for the record? Brandon Small. And, sir, were you, uh, you were the victim in this case, correct? Yes, ma'am. And this case occurred back on August 30th, 2021, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. If you could briefly explain to the court uh, what your role was that night in this uh, case. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was working that particular zone that night, um, which I normally work that zone, that area. Uh, at that time, I had seen a vehicle with a traffic infraction. It was about 3 o'clock in the morning. I attempted to conduct that traffic stop on Old River Road. I initiated my emergency lights. The vehicle continued to travel for a extended period of time, even at a slow rate. Um, I confirmed that the traffic infraction was still good for the tag lights, at which point, after initiating my emergency lights, the vehicle continued to go. I chirped my emergency siren to, just so they were aware that I was trying to pull them over. As the vehicle pulled over to the curb, the front door on the driver's side slowly began to open at that point. I called for an additional unit because at that point that is kind of a sign that someone is probably going to run or that there's something afoot. Um, shortly thereafter, coming to a complete stop, I see the door open, a male jumps out and starts running um, northbound on Old River Road. I get out of my vehicle, I continue a foot pursuit. During that time, I'm calling out the direction of travel, the description of, of the suspect. just to interrupt but did you have your body camera on that night I did All right. I did at this point I want to uh, show your body cam uh, of what transpired and then afterwards ask you a few more questions I yes, did talk to uh, defense counsel about whether we need to go through the appropriate identifying the the uh, video process and they were willing to waive it and we're just gonna play it this is the video very good
watching that video? Uh, a lot of anxiety. Uh, heart rate picks up. It's almost like reliving the moment. Um, it, uh, it, it's, it's sobering to realize how close and I believe that I, I came to being hit by a vehicle. Did you feel the, uh, the air from the vehicle as it went past you? Absolutely. Have you suffered any long-term effects as a result of that night? Uh, no. Uh, I've been fortunate to have a, a support system at the sheriff's office through the chaplains and things in which to discuss uh, the matter. Uh, just being in that environment, knowing the decision that made in a split second, having to bear the consequences of my own actions, you know, um, it weighs very heavily on you having to get an attorney and find out, who knows, maybe the sheriff's office shows up at my doorstep and I'm the one that's going to jail. Officer, she was also charged and pled to false report to law enforcement and tampering with evidence. Could you explain to the court what that was about? So in the after action during the investigation, Your Honor, um, when Mrs. Harper was taken into the custody, prior to that, she had, I think hours later, she had filed a false police report saying that some other individual had just stolen her vehicle. She didn't know where it was. She had completed a sworn affidavit on the issue, on the matter. It was entered into NCIC per policy, during which time when Mrs. Harper was um, detained by other investigators, it was learned and she admitted to that she indeed had falsified that report and was the driver of the vehicle. Um, and then during which time she refused to cooperate with investigations and provided false locations of the vehicle, refused to talk about it specifically knowing what was all involved. So she just became more obstinate <coughs> in, her, in her standing on, on about the situation. Was the vehicle ever found? The vehicle was found, um, not through any information provided uh, by Ms. Harper. Um, we had received information as to where the location of the vehicle was. It was found and it was subsequently towed to the Oklahoma County Sheriff's Office security impound lot and a search warrant was executed by investigations. And were you led to believe that there had been drugs in the vehicle? From my understanding that there was some sort of narcotics based on the interview done by the uh, lead investigator on that case. Investigator, how, uh, what would you like for the judge to know in this particular case? I mean, what do you want to see happen? Um, it, with all due respect to you, Your Honor, that is, that's, the judge's position and I don't want to answer this in a way that may seem like I'm trying to supersede his authority but from my point of view I believe a very firm sentence is due in a case like this um, in my opinion three to five years we have a situation in which an individual made the decision to get into the vehicle could have very well easily drove the vehicle in a different direction drove at my direction at a high rate of speed peeling out um, coming at me to the point where I had to make a decision in seconds, process the information, try to figure out what their intent was. See, my, my opinion is that in life we get to choose the decisions that we make. And at no point was there any contrition made to me, an apology, nothing. And even when caught, Mrs. Harper still refused to cooperate and provide to show any signs of, hey, okay, I was caught, let me try to make this right. We get to choose the choices we make. We shouldn't get to choose the consequences. And for me, I just think sometimes to deter bad decision-making, sometimes um, guidance and, and a firm punishment is needed so that this doesn't become a recurring behavior or pattern of behavior. And I'm, that's just kind of where I am, Your Honor, with all due respect. Thank you. That's all the questions I have, but Mr. Gilbert may have some questions for you. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Gilbert? Uh, none, Your Honor. Thank you, officer. You may step down. Thank you, Your Honor, that's that's all the testimony that the state has, but the state would like to present argument when the court is so ready. Mr. Gilbert, do you wish to pr provide any evidence? The defendant testimony? would like to address the court.
Nope. You, you, sit up, you get to sit on the. Yeah. Can we? We're not going to need that anymore, nope. are we? With no. Can yeah. we shut that down? It's on the screen. Right? Thank you. Stand. Where you're at. Can you just shut down something? Because that's where you. Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Please be seated. Gilbert? Harper, you have uh, been intending to speak to the court today, is that true? Yes, sir. You've written a statement? Yes, sir. Why'd you write it down? Because I just want the, the court and the officer to know how I feel. Please go ahead. Um, Honorable Judge Ketchell, I would like to address the court first by apologizing to the arresting officer, Officer Small. I was in no way trying to put you in harm's way. I only wanted to leave the scene. The thought of someone getting hurt never crossed my mind. I truly apologize for reacting to the situation in a manner that could have hurt anyone. My intention was to just get away from there. Please forgive me. I would also like to address some of the events that have led me to standing in your courtroom. I have been in the system since I was a young teenager. This is not my first time in front of you. I showed with substance abuse from an early age that brought me to being placed in more than one program as a juvenile. I was able to successfully complete the court's choice of programs and was able to recognize the behaviors causing this, this cycle. I've learned how to maintain sobriety and exercise self-control. The fact remains, I just didn't realize how serious it is to be in trouble as an adult. I have sat in Okosa County Jail for four months. I have, I've had every day to think about who I am and who I want to be. I do not want to be another statistic. I have met many women in these months that said I remind them of themselves. I don't want to look back at back on my life with regrets and think to myself that I could have had a better and bright future. I plan, I plan on applying my I plan on applying everything I've learned over the past few years. I am determined to be a productive member of the community. I've or community and live in a way that I can be proud of myself. I want to set an example to other young women showing them they can turn their lives around with hard work. I hope I am given the opportunity to prove myself. My goal is to start school as a veterinarian tech. I want to learn about my family business and start working in the learning process. I hope to establish a healthy relationship with my dad. I have multiple people to help me on my path to success and supporting me in every way I will need. Thank you for your time and consideration. Gilbert? Your Honor, the, the court has great discretion in this matter. First of all, I'm going to ask you, do you have any other witnesses? Oh, no. Okay. So, you may proceed. The court has great discretion in this honor. We have a three year cap, but uh, on that's only incarceration, uh, but otherwise, uh, you have a Fairly open slate. We ask for a different approach than incarceration or further incarceration, though. Harper's had the opportunity to learn a lot. She was charged with serious crimes and she's been shot at. An important lesson in how things can go badly very fast, even far beyond one's intentions. She's been incarcerated for four months now. She has just committed to the court that she has learned a huge lesson and is eager to prove through success by completion of a highly restrictive probation that she has gotten the message and it wants to get back on track. In the letter from her father, he saw some of the, he 
We learned of some of the history there with her mother being diagnosed with degenerative brain disease at age of nine and having passed away back in December. And as we know how terrible that is as a disease to the individual, and one can only imagine how terrible it is to be the child of a parent going through their brain disintegrating and the trauma that that causes between the father and the mother and the child. In the 22.2 points of her score sheet today, some of those points date back to when she was 14 years old, going through that time with her mother and trying to make the best of it. And if you look for signs of hope with her, there are some. She went ahead and completed her GED. She's held jobs. But there's no doubt uh, her, her past has not been great. Uh, and this is the culmination of that. She has recognized that she has to make a change. And so she's at a crossroad. I mean, we know she's going to be in our community one way or the other down the road, and she's either going to choose the right path and be that as a good standing, upstanding citizen or not. And this is an opportunity for her to show that she's learning the message, she's got the message, and she's going to make a change. And the court, with all its controls of probation and whatnot, will get to see if that's true or not if it gives her the chance to prove herself. Give her, we ask that she be given that chance as soon as possible. We ask for community control as opposed to further jail time. Uh, during that, she'll be highly monitored, but she'll be allowed to work, go to school, and begin providing for herself and proving herself the good citizen to this court. We ask also that adjudication, at least on the felony, be withheld. Ms. Harper qualifies as a youthful offender. She was 18 at the offense. She has no previous withholds. Uh, so we ask that the court consider withholding the felony so that her civil rights will be protected going forward. She's only 19 and she stands here today. If the court determines that further jail time is warranted, we respectfully ask that the court consider suspending it. That would provide further incentive to succeed in probation, but allow her out where she can start to work to get it right. This River Harper's best chance was derailed upon the illness of her mother a long time ago. And she has struggled greatly in the loss, in that loss, which this court knows. But she gets the message now, Your Honor. Thank you for your consideration. Uh, <clears throat> Your Honor, uh, she, Ms. Harper, is at a crossroads. The state has some concerns about her taking the right path. Since she was arrested on this case, she was arrested two more times. She pled to petty theft in Walton County, and there was another drug case that was dismissed uh, that occurred after this if, in order to, and part of the plea agreement was to dismiss the other drug case. So, state questions whether she has learned anything from this experience considering the fact that she has continued to commit more crimes. She talks about maintaining sobriety and exercising self-control and again the state's concern is is has she done that because the facts that I just mentioned indicate that she has not. As I mentioned in my memorandum, just days after her being released from her post-commitment probation, this case occurs. While she's out on bond on this case, the two other cases occur. So the state is concerned that she, as to whether she has learned anything. This is a, a very serious event that happened. Uh, the officer downplayed today the effects that it's had on him based on my conversations with him. And uh, I think the court needs to take into consideration all the factors, the positives and the negatives, when making its decision. Uh, officer Small has indicated that he would like to see her do three to five years. The state did put a cap at three years. 
So uh, he is requesting uh, three years uh, in this particular case. Thank you. Can I point out something? He's requesting three years. The charge that he's affected by is a misdemeanor. The state did that as part of the plea agreement. He is still a victim in this case, and he still has the right to say what he would like to see happen in the case. I'm just pointing out what the crime that he's involved with is. So let's, let's not forget that we have the whole issue of her in trying to, um, in the tampering with evidence and trying to prevent discovery of what was done. So, the court's going to take a short break, then we'll uh, come back and court will make its rule. All rise. <laughs>
Please be seated. After reviewing all the testimony and the documents uh, with regards to the sentencing, and you need to listen to the full sentence. Don't listen to any part of it. You need to listen to the whole part of it because I, I will tell you that I'm going to say something before I'm, I make my sentence that I'm going, to, I'm going to give you some advice. You might not be able to hear it well, you know, after the sentence. I don't want to get a call. I want you to hear it. The biggest issue that this court has, not only obviously the poor judgment that led to these charges, but you have had a longstanding substance abuse issue. And I don't have to get I'm not getting up here on my soapbox. I'm not moralizing this. I'm saying for your benefit. Whatever whatever happens today is the beginning of your journey. It ain't the end of your journey. It's the very beginning of your journey. It's the beginning of the rest of your life. And if you're going to beat these things, if you're going to beat this addiction, you've got to continue to work on your mental health and to, to get. And you've got to develop a support system. You don't develop a support system and you're doomed to failure. You need to find people that you need to figure out who your friends are. You need to hear what I'm saying as a young person. I had old gray hair and all that. You need to, you need to figure out who your friends are. Because your friends are going to have a profound influence on you as you go forward. The court's going to sentence you to 11 months, 29 days in the county jail. You'll get credit for time served. In addition to that, you're going to get a year of community control and a year following that of probation. Okay? That's a total of three years. During the course of, the, of your probation and your term, you're going to uh, be evaluated for substance abuse and mental health and follow whatever recommendations that are contained within that. You already have been doing that. It's not like you're you're learning something new, but it's, it's it's an ongoing battle. And the very fact that it was tied up with this, if not, you won't make it out of community control, and you won't make it out of probation. So that's what I'm saying to you. And, and, and unfortunately, statistics are, I've been told, Upwards of 50% of the people don't, don't succeed on their probation. That's not even community control. I'm saying this to you. I want you to you see you need to look at it straight up, eye to eye, what you're facing. Okay? Because with these charges, and there will be an adjudication, with these charges, criminal justice system, it does two things. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I told you this when you were in my juvenile court. That the adults, adult system is different. <laughs> and no hand-holding in the adult system. That's number one. The other thing is, and I said this also, but I want you to hear it again. The system stacks. Or the, this, just, the criminal justice system in this country is, is not immediately punitive. It gives people chances. But at some point, and you're at that point now where you've, you've had some of these issues. So Habs, again, there, there, won't, there won't be any give. I mean, you are a young person, and that's part of the reason why the court did this, because you're a young person, and you still figuring out some good sense. That's not an excuse, but it's, it's a fact. Got to admit it. 
be better if you admitted it as well, so you can maybe seek some guidance from some people that have been down this road before and maybe can avoid you. Okay? So you're avoiding going to the Department of Corrections. That was intentional on my part. If you violate this, this will go downhill quickly. Yeah. Standard court costs and whatever. Concurrent. <coughs> concurrent. Yes, there are the two charges. These are the same. They'll run concurrent. Thank you. But they're consecutive in the sense that the the jail, the community control, the probation are consecutive. Those are not concurrent. And I, I don't like community control. I wish they'd change that. And the term I like is house arrest. You need to abide by that. You need to. You need to. You need to make your best new best friend needs to be your probation officer when you get out. You better open some lines of communication. Make sure you understand what you can and cannot do. And good for you. Go out and get a job, work. You've got some opportunities. You got opportunities other people don't have. You got a lot of opportunities other people don't have. Probably played a little bit into what brought you here. Those are all drying up if you don't get this thing straight today. So it's your call. Okay, anything else we need to do on this case? Wait for you. Thank you. Okay, very good. I'm sorry? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. I know we have one other case. Let's take a short break, and then we'll come back uh, and finish up. Hey, Lauren, Lauren, can we get up her real quick?